Why do you think uh, former President Trump threw you under the bus over the weekend? Well, I, I didn't get thrown anywhere, but I think there might have been an attempt to do that. I'd say that it's partly because what it was, Elon, you were under the bus. Well, look, I'd say what and, Elon and Musk and others are saying. The bus seeing. had snow tires on it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this is, is you know, I'll, I'll, I took it in a, in a lighthearted way. But the truth is people have to have their heads stuck in the snow not to see what's happening on the ground here. I know the mainstream media is ignoring it, but there has been a massive surge here late in the process. Mm -hmm. A number of endorsers who were widely expected to go to Donald Trump, legends in Iowa, like former Congressman Steve King, mm -hmm. widely expected to go for Trump, came for me. A number of the strongest constitutionalist conservatives have switched from the other candidates in the last 72 hours to me. Steve Holt came from Ron DeSantis. Right. And so I think people who are actually on the ground are not blind to that reality. And right. I think the mainstream media, largely for better or worse, has been, which means I think we're going to see a shock tonight. And, and Dr. Apoorva, uh, Rimshwami, one of the things about the Iowa caucus is there's no early voting. So it's not like people have already voted. They're going to go to a high school gym or something like that tonight at 7 o'clock, and they're going to decide. They're going to write the, the name down. And as we've heard, there are a number, and it's not a gigantic number, but there's still a significant number of people who are undecided. Yeah. And so that's why a late surge is really good for you. If you're going to surge in a campaign, you want to do it on Election Day, caucus day in this case. Exactly, exactly. You, we have people who, despite this cold, are going to be coming out because they are so passionate about this cause. They have been campaigning all this whole process, and especially now. They Welcome to the show. It is Monday, January 15th, and the Iowa caucus begins, well, starts tonight. Actually, the 2024 presidential election cycle literally begins tonight. Let me introduce Mr. D.R. Robinson. What's up, Jay? Hey, hey, hey. Happy Monday, everybody. Buckle up. It's going to be a wild week. If many of you, if this is the first time that you're watching the show, make sure that you're sharing what you are viewing. Uh, we're still behind the suppression um, wall. And uh, let me see. Let me make sure Facebook isn't doing it. Facebook isn't doing that thing. Uh, do not sh uh, support us on Facebook. Um, I don't know why those links keep showing up there because I am not putting them up there and uh, I don't want Facebook to get anything that y'all want us to have. So uh, do not, I repeat, do not share anything on F Facebook except for this link. Okay. Sooner or later, um, toward the end of the year, maybe, uh, well, sooner or later in the next couple of, um, in the next couple of weeks, maybe we'll have a link. You know, but uh, we we got um, Hutch Bailey that just joined the show. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Had a little power mishap, and then when, I went, to, when I went to when I went to reboot, uh, of course, an update was waiting, so I had to wait for it to update. <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah, that that Skype update was of the devil, man. It's <laughs> two minutes before the show, man. Yeah. Boom, dark, everything I mean, dark. Yeah. I remember those days. Um. Well, we, I mean, we just, I was basically telling everybody to share, um, to share the show. Um, we're here, we are here every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, we're going to be here until the election, depending on what the election, on what happens during the election, after election. We might be moving to Hutch's compound in. <laughs> but, I'll tell uh, you what, I, don't get me started. I had a tough weekend. I had, oh, a, really? leaky, had a leaky roof up there. Oh my goodness. Leaky roof and six inches of snow, and yeah, I'll oh, fix the yeah. rough hutch. 
<laughs> we'll let Wayne cook. I cook. Yeah, I cook. Yeah, you can be the gunnery yeah. defense. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and believe me, I I make sure that your turkey pot pie is really cooked very well. <laughs> but um, tonight, plenty of turkeys up there. Yeah. Hey. Hey. We can smoke a turkey. We, <laughs> we can smoke it. Actually, I bring my deep fry up there, and we're deep fry that thing. Oh. Uh, did you get your deep fry yet? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. He. Yeah. He. I got the deep fryer, and now I'm starting to see all these stories about oil. Man, it's freaking me peanut. out. Peanut. Any seed oil. Any seed oil. You have to cook it like super high temperatures, and the they discovered those oils like vegetable oil. That that was a byproduct of some other. Exactly. You don't want to use you don't want to use vegetable oil for anything because right. you don't really want. But um, peanut oil is the only thing that you fry and um, your turkey in. That that yeah, and and plus peanut is um healthy too. I think now I use avocado oil to fry chicken. That's good. Avocado oil and olive oil are both healthy. But the ones I'll, that you can squeeze when you can squeeze the oil out. Yeah, supposedly that's good to go. But when you start getting it in a lab, you know, <laughs> you can't squeeze oil out of a seed or a peanut. Yeah, well, that never ends well. The only thing about olive oil is that it it burns fast. So yeah. the, the smoke point. Right. For that that's is, why avocado oil is good. Yeah. Avocado oil is really Especially good. Especially if you're using, like, if you like to saute stuff in butter. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you yeah. add a little avocado oil yeah. to it, it raises the smoke. Yeah. temperature yeah so exactly. it won't burn we're getting ready for our january 2025 content when we're doing all cooking and food <laughs> and survival yeah well, well you know we'll, we'll see how today's the day man today's the first yeah. day yeah. and um jay jay was right about um being worried about the uh the weather because um um, it, um they're packing it in they're, i mean it's 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 um you you're really gonna have to uh, want a change or uh, or need to see a change in government to come out tonight in Iowa uh, for for um, the blizzard conditions and stuff that they're supposed to be seeing and stuff. You're really going to, if you press out tonight, we used, to, we used to think about these like pressing in, in churches and stuff, but if you really press and, and get yourself out there tonight to go to these caucuses, you're a bad mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're a bad mother. So, um, how do y'all think will. turnout? I think, think it'll be. I think it'll be big. I think it'll be bigger than it's ever been. I hope. I mean, look, we get what we deserve. If it's not, then shame on us. Right. Yeah. I mean, if all million people in Iowa who voted for Trump turn out, Trump destroys the field. Just destroys the field. I mean, you'd go out, right? You'd go out if it was a blizzard. I know I would. Right. I'd walk. I mean, I walk to my polls anyway. Mm -hmm. I would, but I don't know how strong other people are these days because a whole lot of people like to do a whole lot of stuff on social media and then really to be active in person. So, I mean, other than that, you know, I mean, we've seen people out all weekend. We've seen rooms filled. So... <laughs> Did you see Ron DeSantis get his participation? <laughs> that was excellent. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. believe that guy did that. I can't either. But but I'll say this um, because I tweeted out when I saw it. I was like, "See, somebody smart would have turned that into an opportunity. They would have taken right. a trophy." Well, thank you, thank you for this. Um, uh, I. People are so hilarious these days, <laughs> but we have to fix this country here. Um, Johnny, take this. Uh, you, you know, you you work with it instead of having your wife jump in front of you. That, that was the best part. <laughs> <laughs> the dude's wife is up there defending him. What are you doing? Oh, man. I mean, it just, just a whole lot of stories that came out this weekend. And I might, uh, be, I might be a little slow on this. I kind of didn't pay attention this weekend too much a little bit but not too much i you know i i, I saw stuff things. in my mind i saw things and uh uh um, vivette got no 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 actually before we get to vivette that that um that that participation trophy 
I kind of labeled that as um, Lion Ted. Um, you know, that where um, Ted Cruz was finally removed from the presidential race in 2016. That's how I looked at that. That's how I looked at that one. Again, I ain't for Ron DeSantis. Because that guy got out of there. I don't know how he got past security, but he <laughs> <laughs> he got up there and and hey, such such a boy. I, Nikki Haley self destructed this weekend too, man. Holy you, really hear, you, really, you really don't hear too much about her from the ground. The only thing that you hear about her is the endorsements. She's still getting endorsements. Yeah, well, it's a big club, and you ain't in it. Yeah. Yeah, the Uniparty is out in full force for Nikki. I mean, big donors. They got Democrats. Democrats, yeah. Switching. See, in Iowa, the caucus starts tonight. Don't quote me on the time, but like 6, 6.30. Everybody heads to their Democrat. fire station or whatnot. Yep. And then they they start caucusing, which is where you kind of vote for your county or your precinct or whatnot. But you can re-register as a Democrat to vote in the Republican caucus tonight. And they're encouraging Democrats to do that and vote for mm -hmm. Nikki Haley. It's and she's not saying like no. It's the craziest thing ever. Well, um, I in uh, two thousand and twenty, in two thousand twenty, no, in two thousand eighteen, uh, two thousand and yeah, two thousand eighteen, and two thousand, I maybe no, in two thousand eighteen is when I first saw. Democrats voting for Republicans as a strategy. And I had never heard of that before. Now, people in the comment section and whatnot, yeah, they do that all the time. I had really never thought about Hell, I, I thought that it. was wrong. I did it. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. oh I went, I switched to I want there was a guy running for mayor of Pittsburgh mm -hmm. that was running on a Democrat ticket, I think. And I had a change to be a Democrat so I could vote for him for the price. He lost anyway. <laughs> but I was a Democrat for a couple of days. Then hey. I th then I went back to independent. Now I got to go change back to Republican so I can vote for Trump. Right. Yep. Yep. This is hey, you want to you, you want to rig the game? All right. Right. Um, speak speaking about rigging things. There's a whole lot of um, conservative influences. I look. I don't know where they're getting paid or not. I don't know whether they're getting paid by Vivek or, well, I, we kind of figured that Ron DeSantis was doing a little bit of money handling um, at the, in 2023. But there's some conservative influences now that are jumping over into Vivek's campaign. One of them is Candace Owens. No. Uh, oh, yeah. Candace Owens over the weekend. Uh, a child. Not, not only jumped on the train, she is traveling with Vivek <laughs> in Iowa um, a couple of weeks after she had um, her uh, her second baby. But she basically said that uh, Vivek is one of the most brilliant people we've ever seen in politics. He's a plant. And um, uh, that's, you know, I uh, when I saw that, when I when I heard about that, I was like, wow, really? Now, understand you're not really in touch with the Trump campaign after a couple of things that happened toward the end of his term. So I don't understand you jumping on somebody to, to hold on to some type of relevance. Okay. But uh, these kids, <laughs> these kids, uh, let's see if I have it. If I had the photo, I mean, I had the photo. I sent it to the guys, though. These kids came out with um, a t shirt for the vet. And the t shirt basically said to sort of to save Donald Trump and vote for the vet. And the vet was standing in the middle with his, with his, with his um, cheeky grin. And um, I was like, "Ooh, that that's not going to turn out. That's not going to turn out really." And, and the CIA goes, "Go smile, smile in the back row. <laughs> Give me a break, man." That guy, I, I always wondered, man, from the very beginning of Vivek Raswami, where did this dude come from? I've never seen him, never heard of him. All of a, a sudden, he's on Tucker Carlson's show announcing for president. 
I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to think that his total whole job is to convince people that Trump can't be elected. I'm, I'm seriously am. Well, you know, some people in Iowa told his wife the reason why uh, he, the reason why he might have a hard, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, a hard road is that some people think he's Muslim. Uh, he's Hindu. That, right. But that's what he told his wife in a video um, is that some people think that he's Muslim. But um, either way, uh, that uh, Donald Trump didn't like it. Donald Trump didn't like it one bit. And uh, he could feel it too. Donald Trump called him out. Donald Trump called him out. Because think of it this way if he really cared, if he honestly had all the fire and all the intel, if he's the smartest dude in the world, like Candace said, then he would clearly realize he has no path. So, what can you do? What's the best thing you can do if you really do love this country? What's the best you can do? Help the guy that's winning. That's what. And why isn't he? You know, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. I mean, when you when you listen to him, he sounds like MAGA. He sounds like right. he really loves the country, really knows we're in trouble, wants to get us out, but he's not going to do it. He's not going to win by himself. I mean, come on. That's not going to happen. Right. He won't and even beat Nikki Haley. Yeah, Nikki, Nikki is... I think in second place, but that, but um, um, last poll numbers, if you're into poll numbers, uh, he's pulling away from Nikki in second place. We, yeah, he's pulling, he's pulling away from Nikki in second place. I'm talking about Trump. Oh, Not, yeah. When you saw that photo, because, because I know that uh, you like uh, um, Rebecca a little bit. Uh, well, um, but yeah, that you like Rebecca a little bit. What do you think about that photo, um, Jay? So the whole the whole Vivek thing's funny. Where this comes from, and I like Vivek. If Trump was not the nominee, and I was left with this Annis Haley and Vivek, I'm not sure I wouldn't pick Vivek. I, I could agree with that. Just 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 a level set. Like I would not pick Vivek over President Trump. But if right. Trump's out, I'll roll the dice on the wild card and whatever baggage he has. I mean, because I know what I'm getting with Nikki and DeSantis, and I know they'll just screw us over. So that's just my opinion. I like Vivek. He's a smart guy. If you watch long-form interviews of him, he has some interesting takes. Like, he says you need to pass a citizenship test to vote. Kind of cool. Actually made me Google the citizenship test and say, I wonder if I could pass. And it was actually hard. Uh, but one of the things Vivek has been talking about is that the deep state's going to go after Trump and that they are going to do anything up to terminate him. I mean, he's he talked a lot about the increasing um, targeting that they've been doing on President Trump. So, so for those who've listened to Vivek, this was not a new thing. This is something that we, we knew of. But those it's kids... his job. Made, that's his mission. That's his mission, <laughs> right. But his these kids <laughs> made this shirt, and he posted the... The picture with him and it was funny because friend of the show rich barris i was scrolling through twitter on whatever day that came out saturday and i saw rich barris who who just did like a a one sentence post like ouch vivek just made his first major mistake of the campaign and i'm like i hadn't seen the shirt yet i'm like oh i wonder what he means so i clicked on vivek's timeline and i saw that and i'm like oh that's going to leave a mark mm -hmm. and uh i mean the shirt says save trump vote vivek the the pitch is essentially that vivek will go in clean up the deep state <laughs> stop them from targeting trump yada 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 and uh and like i say if trump wasn't in the race that could be a a noble thing but with trump in the race like nobody on mega wants you to save us you know what i mean <laughs> trump don't want you to save him i mean it, it's like if you're stuck in the snowbank you don't want to be so stupid not to ask for help but by the same time you don't want to be a wuss and make people think that you need need their help so yeah that was that was one of his first big mistakes of the of the campaign. So well, another one, another mistake was, and I didn't, and I didn't see this until Sunday morning. I didn't see this until Sunday morning. Um, wait a minute, I thought I. Okay, so I didn't see this until Sunday morning, but I guess the Trump campaign also saw this video that I'm going to play you. I think the Trump campaign saw this video, and that's what 
prompted Donald Trump to come out and finally go after Vivek. Yep. And, yeah, I know uh, you have, and, and I love that you're a fellow constitutionalist, and you get you ask the best, you ask some very good questions, go right to the heart of it. Yes, and uh, I'm telling you, thank you, sir. Thank you. They're scared of you. Just they like are. They're scared of Trump. Oh, they are. Scared and they will stop at nothing, but we're not going to let them get away with it. I've got fresh legs. I'm not wounded. And they're not going to let this man do it. You know, when you this said eliminate, eliminate, that gave me a chill but be, because I'm scared. Because you think it's false, or because you think it's true? I think it's true. I think they will stop at it nothing is, to stop that. Stop Trump. I am. I, it's sad, but it's the truth. It's the sad, but it's the truth. So I'm but asking you to do your part, and we're going to. You know, when we I can do this. Polls, we can do, do this. this poll, yeah. They say, "How do you feel about the United States?" And I say, "I'm worried and I'm fearful." My job that you don't have to feel that way in this country. But we're losing it. We're, lo- it, it, we're losing it. It, it pains me to hear people. that. We need people yeah. like you, you young, do, we're vibrant. Do this. We're, and that's where our founding fathers were. Yes. It's 1776 moments. So I want your support at that Iowa caucus. And I get emotional I, over that. I, I'm emotional about this country. I need your support on Monday night. You do this, I'm going to do my part. Okay, you're, you're picking at my shell. You are. Yeah. But, you know, I've got to commit. It's about this country. I know. It's about this country. You want to save, you want to save Trump, you vote for me. I'm telling yeah. you that. You have you vote for Trump. You're sending He's him. A sledgehammer. No, but you're sending him to his own demise. You're, you're falling into the trap that not only a country's falling in, that he's falling. You want to save Trump? You vote for me. I need your support at the Iowa caucus. That's a good argument. That's it's, a good it, argument. It's, it's not an argument. <laughs> man, that's the first time I saw that. I did. I, I stayed away from that thing. No wonder Trump's pissed off. Yep. This morning. A vote for Rebek is a wasted vote. I like Rebek, but he played it too cute with us. Caucus tonight, vote for Donald Trump. Build up the numbers. In November, we must take on our very troubled nation, a nation in decline, back from the crooked Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats and thugs who are destroying it, MAGA. <laughs> That's the second time he went after Think of it. Think of it this way. Let me let me just pose this in a certain way. If Vivek was MAGA and going after the deep state, it would take him. It would take the government half of an indictment to get rid of him. <laughs> they wouldn't even need a whole indictment. They could hire some Indian Sikhs to a come threat. over and whack him. They would need look. All they would need is a threat against Vivek. A threat. It's funny you guys say that because that's kind of the DeSantis argument where he'll say, like, oh, they're going after Trump, so pick me because, but they're just going to go after DeSantis. Right. If they're they going to go after any of us. DeSantis, it means he's on the take. That's so, right. So the, the argument that these guys, all of them are making, like, none of them are saying they can stand up to the deep state or, you know, no. they could try to destroy my businesses and throw me in jail, you know. And we should I would be, stand up to it. We know? should be damn thankful that Donald J. Trump is the badass gangster that he is. Right. Because they're coming. And he's punching back. He's already, I mean, have you seen the stories circulating about the deep state and a military coup if Trump wins? Oh, my God. I mean, the stories are getting freaking deep, man. No, yeah, and that man. was NBC News. They're trying to remove civilian supervision of the military. It's crazy. And boy, the generals would jump at that, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I hadn't, I, I, I hadn't, I hadn't heard that at all. Oh my all, God, the news all, this weekend was wild. You had that. You this morning, you got the Hooties attack and a ship, and then how about that Palestinian that. thing at the White House? Wait, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But look, the um, um, the Houthi thing, thing. The crazy thing of, about what happened with Biden attacking them or going after them is that a couple hours before Biden did it, they said, if you attack us, if you attack us, we won't stop at what we're going to do. If you do it. Right. And they did it. The, to, I mean, to me, I'm like, wait a minute, diplomatic. Let's think about this before we they said, if you do it, we won't stop. We're going, you know, 
we will be responding and whatnot. And the U.S. and the U.K. attacked them. And, you know, uh, some of these people, some of these people on our side, too, they were like, oh, you should have came to Congress to the, um, to, well, y'all gave up that back after 9-11. And yeah. I don't think y'all have taken it back. And and I know some of y'all might be new and stuff, but y'all need to go and look to see if y'all got your power restored from what you gave George W. Bush. Because y'all gave the that seat the authority to basically wage war without saying we're going to war. If but at least you but you had to, you were supposed to make them come out and give the war plan. You're supposed to come to Congress and tell us what the plan is. You know, but they, but um, uh, um, Bush didn't. Bush just took it upon himself. And remember, it was that one Democrat said, no, 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 no. I don't think y'all should do that. But everybody voted to do it. He did it. He, he just said, okay, generals, go and do it. I got the power to do it. Barack Obama, for all the things that uh, people praise him about, he droned more people probably than any other president. He just he just went ahead and did it without Congress even knowing it. Well, I don't but know they Congress still had the War Powers Act. I mean, they still had the authorization. I forget the exact wording of it, but before yeah. we went into uh, Iraqi freedom, they gave them the authority to do it, and they never rescinded it. I don't think that's what I'm talking about. And, and yeah, the the president can take limited military action. Limited, right, right, um, mainly defensive in nature. Right. right, right, and that's and. That's what the White House is saying that they did. They, they said, we didn't need to go to Congress for this. And that, I mean, and that's how Barack Obama got away with doing this stuff. That's how George Bush got away with it. And, and Biden is using those presidents, precedents to, to what he did. Well, plus there's so many warmonger Republicans in there, they're not going to rescind it anyway. Yeah, they don't. They're trying to. And, and they're in charge. They, they can rescind it, right? They can turn... They can vote to yeah, get their power back sure. right now. It's and in the Constitution. Do all you got to do is go back to the Constitution. That's it's crazy all, to me. It is. And you look oh, at yeah. the lies well, that are coming that. out now, all, all these freaking lies. You, you got this story floating around that somehow two Navy SEALs got lost at sea. That You know what happened to those two Navy SEALs? The Houthis killed them. That's what happened to those two. They're, they're just BSing it for politics, man. You know that's what happened. Yeah. Navy SEALs don't get lost at sea. Well, what's the crown jewel? <laughs> right. I mean, they keep them in the water for like three weeks. Right. Well, <laughs> what's the crown jewel of the military industrial complex? What have they been going for since 9-11? Iran. Iran. Yeah. 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 They want the Iranian U.S. war. It's crazy, man. It's, yeah, they it's want insane. It they want it bad. And the thing about it is, you know who freaking dies in those things? MAGA kids. Yep. Yep. Middle class, lower class. Yep. 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 So you, I, guys did, you guys didn't see that video of those two dudes fighting in the barracks, did you? Oh, this Lord. weekend? Oh, we're doomed. Yeah. Oh, I did where it was like cat fights. Yeah, they were like yeah. girls, man. Two army dudes in the barracks. It's like, what are you doing? You didn't, you're not even swinging at them. I mean, you're like, Slap boxing or something. I mean, it was it was crazy, right? He's looking, looking for, for it. it. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm looking for it. Yeah, it's Barrett a, fighting. Yeah, Tyson or Barrett. B a r r a k. Maybe a C. I don't know if there's a C in there or not. Yeah, some something's going on with um with uh these images on Twitter. Have you noticed that, Jay? Lately? Oh yeah. Twitter's been actually the whole internet's been acting weird the last like four or five days. Uh -oh. I'm wondering if Ayla's <laughs> gonna have anything about that because it's just yeah, stuff not yeah. uploading, stuff being slow, just websites just acting weird. Yeah, I did notice that too. Come to think of it, yeah, it's um, taking forever for pictures to load and uh, put. You know, it's it's just looking. And it, like I say, it's not just Twitter, which is weird. no Instagram is like that too, right? Instagram was like that. I'm like, <laughs> I deleted my Instagram like four or five times and it reinstalled it. I'm like, is it me? You know, and usually when I see something wrong, I'll go to Twitter 
and just type in his Instagram, Instagram right. or something to see if other people are, are going through the same thing. I can't find it. Barrett Triton. That's all right. It was just, but they look like a bunch of sissies. Yeah. Okay. But, um, and if you look at the recruitment numbers, they're down so far and there's been so much, like they did all that push for equity. We have very, we, 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 we do not have a very strong military, it would appear right now. No, we don't. No, we don't. We I mean, just from the stats. We'll get to yeah. find out when we send the LGBTQIA yeah. special forces into, into Iran. You, you know what I feel bad for, though? You know they're not all sissies, man. Right. Like the East Sevens and East Six. You know, it, it's like there's people. Oh, the really, older ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's got to And even some of the younger ones. I mean, it's got to be hard to be in there and know. You know, you got to wonder if they're censoring the troops from hearing how the people feel, you know? I don't know how they do that. No, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. They don't, believe me, they don't let a whole lot of stuff. And I know people had their cell phones and stuff, but they know how to monitor. Overseas, I can to monitor the stuff coming in because, I mean, um, when when we were serving overseas, we didn't know a whole lot of stuff that was happening in the United States. Armed Forces Network. That's all you got. Yeah, exactly. That that's well, it. and think of how many they purged though, just with yeah, the vaccine too. mandates. Yeah. And then when it looks like a ramping up to war, they're like, Oh, you guys can come back. And everybody's like, Oh, you want me to come back right when we're about to start dying? Like right. that seems like a bad idea. Well, um, let me let me um let me get our sister on here. Um uh, over the weekend, the the uh, Taiwanese the Ta- Taiwanese elections happened. We were talking to Roy last week. We were talking to Ayla about it. Uh, to to where it was, and it seems like they decided that they were going to go against what Papa G wanted. So you know, I've been watching. Believe me, I've been what I've been looking at those headlines to see what is happening. And uh, we have Ayla Wang from the New Federal State of China with us to talk about it. What's up, Ayla? Hi, Owen. Hi, hi, Jason. How are you guys? Happy Monday. I'm so happy to see you, Miss Lady. Listen, a lot of stuff. Election happened. Didn't go the way she wanted. Doesn't look, I mean, and everybody, reports are like, everybody's on pins and needles. They want to, like, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? Give us an update. Absolutely, Winston. So I think CCP intimidation over Taiwan and ongoing going. I've noticed, noticed uh, that you, uh, before the 2024 hours of the Taiwan election, the Chinese, Chinese company actually really released the five spy balloons to Taiwan. And that was just within, within the 20 hours of, of the election. And then mm-hmm. after, you, you know, the, the government announced the history of William Lam Lai, which is uh, uh, the only Thai CCP presidential candidate in, in this run, uh, that, that the Chinese Communist, Communist Party released a 43-second military footage um, mm-hmm. of its exercise o- over the Taiwan Strait. And wait, that a minute, would- wait a minute, wait a minute. Somehow, some way, you're, um, it sounds like a double. You got feedback. Yeah. It sounds like a double um, thing, and I don't want to miss what you're saying. So, uh, is it a bit better now? It's like an echo, like you're talking yeah. twice. Yeah. Okay. Sounds sounds like a double. Uh, it, is that better now? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Sorry about the technical. Good. Okay. Yep. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so just going back a little bit, uh, the CCP's intimidation over Taiwan has been ongoing before and after the presidential election. Um, just within a, a day before, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, final voting for uh, the Taiwan president, the Chinese Communist Party actually released five more spy balloons to Taiwan. And that was just within 24 hours um, before the presidential election. And after, the victory of, of William Lai's, um, you know, presidential uh, running, that the Chinese Communist Party actually released a 43-second footage in its military channel and all over the social media about the PLA's military exercise over the Taiwan Strait. 
So that is self-evident about you know CCP's um, you know ongoing propaganda and military aggression over Taiwan. And on the other hand, the Chinese Communist Party did send over warships to uh, Taiwan as a setback after the Taiwanese presidential uh, election. Yeah. So all these are you know signals and very self-evident that Xi Jinping is absolutely pissed off and uh, <laughs> off the uh, Taiwanese presidential election. And on the other hand, we have supporters uh, within communist China told us that there are actually fireworks being uh, lighted up in, in communist China to celebrate the victory of William Lai. People are celebrating for Taiwanese people, for, for them to have the rights to vote for an anti-CCP presidential candidate. What did, did you just say that there's fireworks in China? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. That, that's that's a good sign. Um, tell the audience a little bit. Um, it looks like the CCP was prepared for this uh, for a while. I mean, they have, you said they released five spy balloons, but talk about the bases around Taiwan, the bases that are not in mainland China uh, and the different types uh, of this network of spy balloons that the CCP has, the PLA has. Absolutely, Hutch. So the Chinese Communist Party has actually over thousands of spy balloon bases that they can deliver and send over the spy balloons to probably every corner of this world at any time. And one of their largest bases outside mainland China is actually in Saudi Arabia. And, and all of the other uh, spy bases that are common um, are also in Cuba, which is, you know, very close to the United States. And the balloons that they have already sent out was actually one of the basic balloons that they have. They have over 200 kinds of spy balloons that they can send over. And these balloons can carry time bombs, monitoring and surveillance devices, and all other weapons uh, that they can be sending over. So we do believe that because of uh, you know this Taiwanese presidential elections results, and that she is not satisfied with what he has been expecting, more spy balloons can be sending over to Taiwan in, in every other corner of this world, and, and more military aggression can be perceived from the Communist Party. You know, I got to say, it's. I think it was Saturday morning I saw the election results, and it was so heartening to see, hey, the right guy won, and to see their process, because for folks that don't know, they use handwritten ballots or hand filled out ballots. They publicly hold them up so people can verify and they get it all done the same day of election. It would be amazing if we could do that in, Minnesota, in America. But as soon as I saw that the anti CCP guy won, I'm like, OK, what's China's response going to be? And we can speculate you know, the balloons and, and what's her next move going to be. But all of a sudden I saw this trading uh, thing about this small country of Nauru. And that took me down a rabbit hole. I'm like, who's Nauru? And like the day after the election, they cut ties with Taiwan. And mm -hmm. then I discovered there's only 12 countries that are wrecking of, of all the countries in the world. Only 12 are allies with Taiwan or, or identify them as, as a country. So what, what's going on with Nauru and does this mean the CCP is going to go after those other 12 countries? Well, absolutely, Jason. One of the common strategy that the Chinese Communist Party use is to intimidate these Taiwanese uh, allies and, and ask them to cut ties with Taiwan, right? And that is a common strategy that we could all speculate and, and think that the Chinese Communist Party could do. On the other hand, the CCP can also try to initiate any other the blockade of economic, trade, and, and transport, um, a boycott, to Taiwan, and, and this is quite possible that you saw that, you know, Nauru was absolutely intimidated and, and kneeled down to the Communist Party because right after the Taiwanese election, right, they announced that they will officially cut ties with Taiwan and they will build ties with Communist China. So we should ask, with such a tiny island country, what interest has been offered to them from the Communist Party for them to make such a decision? And what I I would you know assume that all the other allies of Taiwan might have received the same offers and same intimidations from the Communist Party, and Jason, we have to understand that 
even if the victory of William Lai is, uh, you know, something that all of the Taiwanese uh, would congratulate and would want to see to confront in a uh, Communist Party and defend the Taiwan island, the, the CCP controlled parties also achieved the majority of the Taiwan House, which means the legislation efforts, uh, you know, ahead of the road could be challenging for Taiwanese people the CCP controlled parties can hinder, you know, any other legislative efforts to defend Taiwan or to restrict the CCP's aggressions and infiltrations into their island. So I wouldn't say that it's a complete win over uh, between the, the CCP and, and, and Taiwan, but I would say that, you know, much more challenges are ahead of the road and the winning of William Lai is the first step. This guy, um, I found out, and I, um, some members of Congress aren't happy about it, but he seemed like this guy, um, Chinese millionaire and CCP member Chen, uh, I, I can't say his last name, Taiwan, Taiwan Kuo, uh Smith. <laughs> Jackson. Um, it seems, Ayla, that he is the second largest foreign owner of farmland in the United States of America. And he's been able to do this under the cover. People don't, people really didn't know about it. Now, I heard that he was on the outs with the CCP also, but I, you know, I, I don't know if that's true or not. But he has a big presence, a big, um, uh, uh, how do they say it? Um, uh, footprint in the United States of America. I saw that he has a building too um, with his name, with him and his wife's name on it. In California, uh, something that had to do with research and whatnot. Do you know about this guy? Absolutely. When you know, uh, he purchased nearly two hundred thousand acres of farmland in Oregon in, in twenty fifteen at a reported price rate of four hundred thirty per acre. So you tell me if this transaction is legitimate or not. And his name was not even revealed until. Earlier on that the tax report, the government tax report showing that he is the beneficial owner of these, you know, 200,000 uh, 200, acres farmland. So his name was able to be covered from a 215 till now. It's almost eight, like nine years that people yeah. don't even know that he is the second largest foreign owner of America's farmland. And on the other hand, Chen Tianqiao as the co-founder of the Shenda Interactive um, Entertainment Group. He was awarded by the Chinese Communist Party. He was awarded by the CCP as a so-called socialist construction, um, you know, a nominee or, or, or a prominent figure in China. And this award was absolutely tied with people who have contributed to things to the, to the um, Communist Party, right? And America has allowed people who have been awarded by the CCP to purchase the farmlands in, in your country. So how ironic is this? You know, along those same lines, uh, I often wonder about this. If you look at, at the China's recent history, uh, you've got like 70 million people that have died because of famine and starving, starvation. And I came about the knowledge about the same time as 2015, about that same time, uh, that in the United States, there's about four major meat processing entities. And it seems like I, I saw this documentary that showed paperwork that the Chinese Communist Party controlled people own Smithfield Meats, one of the United States' biggest and yeah. best bacon makers, I'll tell you that. Uh, the, the Chinese Communist Party owns that how, how further i mean maybe that's connected to this farmland i don't know but this seems to be a strategic move uh for for food does that make any sense absolutely Hutch. when they control your farmlands they control your fruit supply chains they control all of the processing factories and they control the price of your market right this is what the Communist Party do in China. They control all of the best farmlands they have. If you look over Xinjiang, look over other, you know, uh, great farmland uh, provinces in, in mainland China, the best lands and the best soil was always controlled and owned by the People's Liberation Army's groups. Hmm. 
the Chinese deplorables does not have the rights to own their own farmlands. And so all of these business, um, you know, dealers in, in the food processing factories, the first thing that they can, you know, they do is they have ties with the local governments. They were asked to join the Communist Party. And uh, that's the only way that they can gain, you know, several shares or interests over the lands of the PLA. And today, the CCP's agents was trying to copy the same strategy into the United States. They asked these billionaires to purchase the largest farmlands they can ever purchase in this country. They bought your meat processing um, factories and, and groups. And the next steps would be they would be able to control your market price, right? And they would be able to control, you know, how expensive it would be for you to buy a bacon in, in, in the supermarket. And this is what they do, uh, you know, for the CCP over the COVID times. People pay for over, you know, uh, $80 for a baguette in, in Shanghai. This what? Is, <laughs> I'm what? telling you. Better be a hell of a baguette. For over $80 for a baguette during COVID times in Shanghai. That's mm. crazy. And this is this is one of the most advancing cities, let alone, you know, all other rural cities whose food was rotten. They the, those foods were delivered by garbage trucks. Ugh. And Ugh. people were feeling blessed because they can still buy over bread during COVID times. And so this is what the Chinese Communist Party do. They have always weaponizing the food supply chains because they knew that when, when the people were starved, they were not being able to protest against the government. But on the other hand, people knew that this government is not feeding you. This government is trying to starve you every time and every single chance they can. And this is primarily why you saw most of the billionaires they do not hold Chinese passports. You ask Chen Tianqiao, you ask the, the owner of those farmlands, does he only get Chinese passports? He never got a green card in America? Does he, you know, provide his children a Chinese, a communist China passport? They never do that because they understand the evil of the Chinese Communist Party. And they move all of their assets to an overseas country, right? And so I think, you know, that explains everything. The CCP throughout its history is starve, you know, is to starve their own citizens and, and their deplorables. And they want to do, they probably want to do the same to the Americans by, you know, purchasing all over these farmlands. You know, it's funny you say that. Breaking I news. Think, oh, Breaking news before, before Jay um, asked his question. The White House was swatted um, earlier um, this morning. <laughs> Um, fake nine one a fake nine one call fake nine one one call has reportedly drew more than a dozen fire trucks and EMS vehicles to the White House. So, um, Hunter blowing coke again. All right. So either way, or Ayla, maybe maybe this is a time reaction type of thing. They want to see how long it takes trucks and stuff to get to certain places for possible. I mean, you know, you got to think that way. So, but, but go ahead, Jay, go ahead. I, I was going to say it's, it's important for our American audience to understand the levers China's pulling because they're the levers they're going to pull here. Nothing's going to make a, a population more upset than when you can't get food. And that's a big part of how they control the Chinese population. They control the means of producing the food, of processing the food, the price of the food, that sort of thing. Uh, so, so it's really important to kind of frame that up. And, and, and my question was, cause I kind of went down a rabbit hole this weekend. Cause I'm like, you know, China's not going to just sit there and take this. And I, I was doing a dive into this purging of the military. And it's funny because in America, we think we'd purge the military for corrupt people or people trying to get us into war in China. All these purges are because these military leaders don't want to go to war. And Xi Jinping wants like the rocket force and, and all these folks completely okay attacking. And, and it was funny because I hadn't really made that connection that he's getting rid of people that don't want to attack Taiwan or don't want to attack America or don't want to attack. So, so can you frame up what more turnover in their military forces you guys see on the horizon? 
Absolutely. Well, it, when you saw every time when you saw military personnel being changed over or disappeared from the public, it was because of internal competition, right? It, it was because of the internal politics. And right. when she raised up or promoted figures uh, who have a close tie with him in the history and who agreed with him on invading Taiwan, this is the absolute signal for, for him um, on the military aggressions and expansion. And I think in uh, 2024, you probably would see more similar events that take place within the People's Liberation Army. Um, the military aggression or the invasion of Taiwan could be at any time because of uh, this current uh, presidential election that, she, uh, as we said that before the election, she already issued uh, with the People's Liberation Army that they can invade Taiwan at any time. And with the unsatisfying results that she doesn't want to see with the Taiwanese election, this military aggression can be ongoing and can be even more exaggerated. So with within the PLA, every time when you saw a general disappeared from the public, you have tons of people who are ahead of them that they've already lost their lives and, and their lives and their families were already controlled by Xi Jinping. No one asked about the former president of China and his family again this year. So no one asked about all these generals and, and where are their families. And this is the brutal nature of the Chinese Communist Party. They sacrificed even people who worked for them over the decades. And they just want to achieve, you know, what she wants. And so this is, you know, primarily why more and more people within the People's Liberation Army understands that they are on a road that they cannot go back. And this is, a, you know, why that a lot of people actually supported the new federal state of China uh, mm -hmm. silently by providing us the intelligence. And this is why we would be able to know, you know, what's the next step that CCP wanted, even when Miles is still in jail today. You know, um, this question I had, question I had. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, I saw. Um, before I let you go, I saw a report that Biden said that the U.S. does not support Taiwan's bid for independence from China. But Ella, that sort of goes against what he what he and Pelosi and all those people said last last year is that if. China uh, uh, attacked Taiwan that they would fight and defend Taiwan. But now, I don't know whether it's bipolar or, or what, but now it's like he's he said that the U.S. doesn't support Taiwan's bid for independence. What do you know on that front? Well, when I, th I think we should look at um, what Anthony Blinken has said after the Taiwanese presidential election. He congratulated on the victory of William Lai, uh, and he, reiter he reiterated that uh, the United States will, um, uh, will respect the shared value and interests with Taiwan, but uh, with an unofficial links. And even with that subtle and soft statement that the CCP was pissed off right away, and, and, and their foreign ministry um, uh, a spokesperson said that after um, the United States statement this said that the United States was actually encouraging the, the Taiwan independence and, and separatist force and saying that the United States is sending over a wrong signal uh, with that statement. So I think when uh, Pelosi was um, arrived at, at Taiwan, it, it, it already tells everything. It already tells that Taiwan is an independent island, that Taiwan people has the right to vote for the president that they want. They have the right to defend their island by voting for a president who is anti-Chinese Communist Party. And their you know, voting process and their uh, election process was transparent they show the world that Chinese people was able to have vote to have voting power for every citizen and every individual. They were able to elect, uh, you know, in a democratic way. They were able to have freedom. Um, they were able to have democracy, and they demonstrate to the world that their politics, uh, you know, represents the you know what the people wants. So right. I think they have already demonstrated to the world that Chinese people 
deserve the right and, and Chinese people is able to live in a in a way that shared you know the same value the same democracy that the western has so this is the basic nature and the basic difference between a communist china and taiwan and this is you know what us the new federal state of china are pursuing we can you know we conceive taiwan as a model and i think that that models will soon be <clears throat> you know, going over to mainland China as we take down the Chinese Communist Party. Before I let you go, um, give our audience, well, I, let people know how they can support and uh, support the new federal state on China, new federal state of China, how they can support you on social media and give us some last thoughts. Absolutely. So you can find us on NFSC TV and NFSC Speaks on Getter X and all other platforms. And by supporting the new federal state of China, we urge the United States to decouple and stop funding the Chinese Communist Party. We need to get rid of all of the CCP agents and their money and their you know, networks and their agents in this country first so that we can take down the Communist Party in mainland China. Thank you, Ayla. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us up, the update on Taiwan. And also that that um, that guy that uh, two hundred thousand acres, man. Um, when I saw, it, I was like, and nobody said nothing. Nobody. Nope. Damn. They're in cahoots, man. This is a there's a breaking story. The RNC is talking with the CCP now. You know, and I know I'd, I'd love they to see money. The huh? They they need money. You know that that's and, and that was on Steve Bannon and Steve Bannon's an ally of the N. It's a co-founder of the NFSC, I think. Yeah, I was going to say preview Natalie Winters, who was on the show, who mm -hmm. I think we're going to try to have on as a regular yeah. guest too. Yeah. She broke it this morning where right. she was digging into the receipts, and she and so I'm sure she'll cover it Wednesday. But there's a whole lot of people in the RNC attending Communist Party China functions. And getting trips, and you know, yeah, it's bad. Wow. Thanks, Ayla. Right. Thanks, Ayla, Ayla. Thank you so much. All this is happening as we are in the home stretch in Commitment 2024 News. Tonight's the night. All eyes will be on us as the First of the Nation caucuses unfold at 7 o'clock. And that's when Iowans will caucus for the candidate they want in the Oval Office. KCCI's Alyssa Gomez is live at the Iowa Event Center this morning. Alyssa, this process could be the same or different depending on party. That's right, and like you said, Alex, we're at the caucus media headquarters this morning, bright and early, and preparations are already underway. Now, whether you've caucused your whole life or this is your very first time, we're going to give you a quick rundown of how the process works on both sides of the aisle. Now, regardless of party affiliation, caucusing begins promptly tonight at 7 o'clock. Republicans will cast their vote for president tonight, having an immediate impact on the presidential election. Participants will write their choice on secret ballots, which will be collected and tallied on sites. They'll also discuss party platforms and begin electing delegates. Democrats, on the other hand, will meet tonight as well, but only to discuss traditional party business. They're opting for a presidential preference mail-in vote this time around, and that can be requested on the Iowa Democrats website. Those results will be tallied and revealed in March. Anyone who will be 18 by November 5th on Election Day can participate in the caucuses, and there are over 1,600 different caucus locations. So we talked with a member of the Dallas County GOP on how to find your caucus location. You can find that obviously uh, by finding your precinct on the Secretary of State website. So you need to go to the Iowa GOP website and put in your precinct number, go to your county and then precinct number, and then your caucus location will magically appear and that, that'll get you to the right location. Now a reminder to participate in the Republican caucus. You must be a registered Republican. If you're not registered, you can do so on site. You just need to bring a valid form of ID and proof of address, such as a utility bill or a certain kind of a different kind of bill. And we'll continue to follow all of the caucus, all of the caucus events as they continue to unfold right here on KCCI. Live in Des Moines, Alyssa Gomez, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. So you need to be a rep registered Republican. So basically, but you, can register, you can register. You can register at the polls, right? <laughs> now, 
here's the thing too. Um, again, that that isn't the first time it's happened, and it's, and like I said, when I was learning about those things that were happening in 2018, when they were switching over to the thing, I was like, well, damn. They, I mean, that that's sabotage. But then again, what happened in 2016? Democrats were switching over to vote for Trump. So, I mean, you know, I think it's more on the donor thing is what we should be more angry about. Because when you have Democratic donors or whatnot, I think it's given the Republican, Republican, Party. Republican candidate. You know, I, I think it's the Republican Party. I mean, when I the, the thing that made me the most nervous about Iowa was when the governor sided with DeSantis because the governor runs elections. The governor and the legislature run elections in the state. So they could have all those little tricky rules that they want to put in there to try to skew it. Well, and we've talked about it before. They give us the illusion that you get to pick candidates, but there's only so much. I mean, Trump was an outsized personality who was a cultural icon, which is what allowed Trump to break through. Right. If Trump was Hutch Bailey Jr., Wayne Dupree, Jason Robertson, Wait. he would not have been able to break through because he would have been squat. <laughs> Wait. You know? Told so, you. I am you, an entity. I am unique. I could break through. Well, then run for the House. Run for the Senate. Yeah, that's all right. You can come to Minnesota. Amy Klobuchar uh, no, doesn't No, I definitely can come to Minnesota. Come I, on. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. You showed all those You showed all those interstates in Iowa all blocked and everything. Have you seen around F Buffalo, New York? Oh, my God. Because we got a game this afternoon. <laughs> you still up. Up. You know what? I don't even want to talk about football. I really don't. I, I know you don't. <laughs> I want them mean. cowboys. That's <laughs> man, I sat there. You see Jerry Jones? Man, last night. I look, I don't know how many times I think I rolled my eyes. I rolled my eyes so long. One time I think I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe what was happening in front of my eyes. I was like, is this for real? Am I watching a replay or something? <laughs> this don't make sense. And then, sorry, y'all. And then after halftime, when they came down and then they scored, I was like, okay, all right. Now all you need to do is stop them. They went down there and let Green Bay score again. I, game over. That's it. That 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 it's over now. It, I mean, you showing you can't stop them at all. I, I mean, oh, man, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk. About it. See, I I don't follow sports much anymore after the Black Lives Matter stuff. And I used to be a big football fan. A lot of my friends are. And several were Cowboys fans. And their most popular meme, I don't know if you can see it, but it shows us like being a Cowboy it. fan. And it's, it. uh, it's season starts, beat up on bad teams, fans delusional. Them Cowboys, this is our year. Choke in the playoffs. Season starts. And I'm like, they, these were friends of mine that were Cowboys fans posting it. Because if you're a Vikings fan, you know they're never going to win the Super Bowl ever. <laughs> they and and you know, every few years they put together a good team where you're like, this is our year. And then they hey, lose back, all. back in the 70s, they were the second pick for America's greatest team. Right. Because the Steelers turned it down. Right. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So this ain't but, America's team, it's Pittsburgh's team. But Minnesota is the only team in the NFL that went to four straight Super Bowls and lost. No, that was the Bills that went to four straight. The Vikings only went to four Super Bowls and lost. Oh, okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. We yeah, are yeah. undefeated in the Super or we have a perfect record in the Super Bowl, Wayne, as yeah. a Minnesota sports fan. Yeah. Yeah. You're We're right. six and one or six and two. I don't even want to talk about football, man. I mean, that game yesterday was so screwed up. I'll tell you, the, along the, uh, the political side of it, yeah. I was the same way as you, Jason. I, I swore off the NFL for three years, baseball for three years, even hockey. I watched a little bit of hockey. But this year I said, you know what? I'm not going to let these pigs take away what I like. Right. And I went and started watching it again. It's the best thing I ever did. How you yeah. like it? I, 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 I like the release. Yeah, to get to yeah. get away from that's the news. Is. That's what it is. That's what it's designed for. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, because because I remember when me and you were kind of sort of watching the the baseball thing, and and both of the teams were doing good at the time, 
Yeah. I was like, to 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 take yourself away from the political side, and you know, Jason, we were watching that Alaska alligator um, thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, or protection. And- yeah, yeah. It's like to to sit there and watch something else instead of having politics eat up your right. brain matter. You oh, know that that three years I was miserable. Me too. It was like, man, what are we gonna do? What are, are I'm out there having having monologues at my car to my wife. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> See, I was going to say Saturday at, or Sunday afternoon, the wife and I used to park ourselves on the couch, watch three <coughs> different games. And then we just got so mad because it's like, here's the national anthem. Who's kneeling? Everybody's wearing Black Lives Matter. Let's sing the Black National Anthem, not the U.S. And then let's have all this stuff about racism on our things. And it just made me mad. And this gayness. Sunday, gayness, too. Yeah, get gayness too. And I don't just like go play football. So this Sunday, we sat on the couch reading books. It was the most relaxing Sunday or Sunday afternoon. We Man, just sat there like old people reading books. <laughs> yeah, you read no I can't. I only got one eye. <laughs> <laughs> those words. Those words, man. They use big words, man. I, I read no book. I wait for the movie. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, for me, to me, I'm just. Well, now we don't care who wins. Tell you the truth. So I'll, I'll probably go back to Port Alaska. But um, uh, your boy um, Ron DeSantis had something to say. All this is happening as we are in the home stretch. Oops. Ron DeSantis had something to say about Bavette, too. Notice that they, um, th- th- that he threw, um, um, the, uh, the back. Back. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he threw him under the bus. Um, you know, it's like, I've never seen a candidate run for an office and basically campaign for another candidate in the same race before, and that's what's happened. But the minute he wasn't useful, you know, they 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 they, they dropped the hammer on it. So that's just kind of the way way they are. But look, we're going to go forward as a party. We can go forward in a way that's focused on people's issues, that's focused on a great agenda for America, or. We can go forward uh, with Trump, which will be focused the 2024 election on legal issues, on criminal trials, on convictions, on on all these things with January 6th. And that gives the Democrats um, a huge advantage uh, going forward. And I don't think that we want to do that. Why would we want to give them any advantage? Makes you wonder about Chip Roy and Massey, man. What the hell's in their heads? You know, Massey um, was behind... Aren't they like libertarians? It's like DeSantis is the most politically connected dude on the stage. The difficulty is for those guys, and I'm not defending them because I fell for the same trap. DeSantis, you can tell, you can look at his trajectory, you can tell where he sold out on the way. One, one of your supporters, one of the five House members. Sorry. No, I, I was just going to say, and I fell for it too. I mean, I had the Trump DeSantis flag. You look at his history, he was a Freedom Caucus member. He didn't get involved in big money stuff. Somebody got to him in his reelection, in his run up to his reelection, and said, Ron, you can be president. And here's the path, and here's what you do take the 30, 30 grains of silver. And he sold out. And guys like Massey remember their buddy because he was friends with Massey when they were in the house. People don't remember. Ron was in the house for, I think, two, three terms. He didn't do anything other than participate in the Freedom Caucus. Mm -hmm. But he was buddies with Massey. And I I like Massey. Um, He brings an interesting twist to politics. Um, And Chip Roy, I've said a hundred times on here, he's just like your big dumb buddy. They don't realize what happened to Ron DeSantis. They just don't. And so they think it's their old friend. Here's um here's Ron yesterday. Supporters, one of the five House members who have supported you, endorsed your campaign, uh, had this to say about why so many others have lined up behind Donald Trump. This is Thomas Massey, Congressman Thomas Massey. He said, I would say a good number of people who have endorsed Trump in Congress have done it because they genuinely want him to be president and prefer him. But a majority of them are scared of their own constituents, not necessarily scared of Trump, but that he would rile up their constituents and that they might lose a prime is that is what is, is that what's going on? Because we are now seeing this stampede of, of elected Republican officials endorsing Donald Trump. 
Well, you, you'll, you'll have to ask them. I mean, I, I can tell you this. I mean, I, I do know elected officials uh, who uh, encourage me to run and say they're going to vote for me uh, in a primary, but yet have endorsed the Donald Trump. That's just the reality of the situation. But here's the thing, what I would tell elected Republicans. You know, when you stand up and you're delivering on conservative issues, you know, Donald Trump's not going to be able to say you're bad if you've delivered on those issues. The voters are going to look at what you've done. I think Trump can be effective in a primary for people who are not delivering on conservative issues and who are going uh, more wobbly or more left on things. But then that's always been the case that people can be exposed in these primaries. So uh, we're doing it. I've got guys like Chip Roy. I've got guys like Tom. I mean, these guys are out there. Uh, they're fighting the good fight. You know, they've got a lot of incoming. But what we can't have as a party is that our movement is detached from the under yeah um, you know, this guy yeah. Go ahead. this guy i mean he know he's not even smart enough to realize that he just got attacked on a hit job by jonathan carl if you listen to the way he led into that uh he's one of the five house members that supports you there's 500 members of the house then you got five of them and he calls that out <laughs> and, and then he explains exactly what politics is supposed to be. The constituents pressure the representative to do what they want. That's what it is. That's American politics in its purest form. I was going to say, when he said your constituents are afraid, that's exactly how every politician should be. Not a Absolutely. physical violence. So let's be clear. They should be afraid that if you don't do what we sent you up there to do, we're going to yeah, fire right. you. And Absolutely. you got to go get a real job. Because yep. politics was never supposed to be a real job. We're sending you up there with what we want you to do. Do it or go home. Or do it and go home. Right. right. Here's um, here's Rebecca yesterday or t this morning with Steve Ducey. Why do you think uh, former President Trump threw you under the bus over the weekend? Well, I, I didn't get thrown anywhere, but I think there might have been an attempt to do that. I'd say that it's partly because of what it was, Elon, you were under the bus. Well, look, I'd say what and, Elon Musk and, and others said. Well, the bus had it. snow tires on it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this is, is <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I took it in a, in a lighthearted way. But the truth is people have to have their heads stuck in the snow not to see what's happening on the ground here. I know the mainstream media is ignoring it, but there has been a massive surge here late in the process. Mm -hmm. A number of endorsers who are widely expected to go to Donald Trump legends in iowa like former congressman steve king hold on steve king <laughs> i'm sorry i i mean he was a real that, friend of the show for a while he was he was and i'm sorry what what happened to him because he got politically assassinated they okay did. he got politically assassinated and guess what we should have known it at the time when we see when we didn't see the Republicans go and defend him and and support him. They 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 got him right out of con so so yes, for did. so for Vivek to throw him in there. The word disgraced is in front of Steve King's name right now, even though it probably shouldn't be, but it's in front of um, Steve King's name. So, but. But he did say he had a lot. Widely expected to go for Trump came for me. A number of the strongest constitutionalist conservatives have switched from the other candidates in the last 72 hours to me. Steve Holt came from Ron DeSantis. Right. I don't know Steve Holt, but oh, well, that, you know, whatever. Um, but Vivek is a great talker. Believe me, he is. If you saw him earlier with that woman. You know that hug thing? He can I've fake it real easy. I've done that hug thing before. And the hug thing is you're you're trying to leave. <laughs> you, you are. You're trying to leave, and you're trying to cut the person off to say, okay, oh, thanks. Oh, oh my God. That, hug. And then because I watched it, I was like, yeah, I've, I've seen it before. But then she said something else, which brought him even closer. And that right there exposed some of the stuff that he's all about. So and so I think people who are actually on the ground are not blind to that reality. And right. I think the mainstream media, largely for better or worse, has been, which means I think we're going to see a shock tonight. And and Dr. Apoorva, uh, Rim Swami, one of the... <laughs> let, me, let me also say about tonight. I think Trump will win tonight. 
and I'm not just pushing that out there just for y'all viewers and everything. I really think Trump's going to win tonight. But after watching some things and everything, don't be surprised if Rebecca doesn't come in second. In in front of Nikki Haley, don't be I was, surprised. I was going to say we should do our production, our predictions, boys. No, yeah, yeah. All right, doing, so, so we got four candidates: we're doing Trump, final DeSantis, thoughts. Haley, and Vivek. Right, we're doing final thoughts. Oh, we're doing final thoughts. Giddy yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I even hold what I was getting ready to say for final thoughts, so that we can get it on record. But um, yeah, this 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 um, this this entire caucus thing uh is is bringing out the bringing out the the changing changing everybody and i again i still wonder how in the world did somebody move the gop caucus to the middle of to the dead of winter in january and not think that it was going to be snowing in 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 iowa or heartland america that's why i don't that's why i'm not that's concerned crazy. about it there has been it's not the first time. It's, every it, it's what they it's what they deal with. Right, but usually, you know, it's in March though. It doesn't snow like blizzard in March. Well, for a presidential election, it's not in March. Is it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Then why'd it move? They moved it to be I thought Democrats moved it. Democrats moved it to South Carolina. They but but Republicans moved it to January. But Iowa's always been the first in the nation, right? In March. All right, I didn't know that. Or February. Uh, I think it's March. Let me look it up. Yeah, GOP moved uh, move uh, caucus to January. Check that out. Yeah, because it um, it used to be later. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear something, not to change the subject, but you right, want to hear right. something terrible? You know who I like better than Mitch McConnell? John oh, Fetterman. John Fetterman. I do. I literally, uh, he is, and, and and don't misunderstand what I'm getting ready to say. I don't support him. No, I won't, I won't. Go ahead. But John Fetterman is what a freaking Democrat used to be. Mm. That's what John Fetterman is. He's not, and came out and said, I'm not progressive. I'm listening to this guy every day. He gets better. And not again, I'll vote against him in a New York minute. But I, we'd be much better off as a nation if that party came back than have these, these people we have now, these radicals. So 2016 Iowa caucus was uh, February 1st. 2020 was February 3rd. So it's a couple weeks earlier. A couple weeks earlier. Okay. I will say on Hutch's note, if you don't follow John Fetterman, you He'll need surprise to. You. He'll surprise you. He, he will. will surprise you. After the body double switch and the stroke. <laughs> Once that medicine kicked in, that medication fixed him. That, hey, they need to put that on the market because that, yeah, that, that, really, cha that really changed a whole lot. That I mean, here's a Democrat senator, first term, that comes out against everybody else in the Democrat Party and sides with Israel. Right. Comes out with everybody else in the Democrat Party and says, we need to fix this border. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, U.S. Steel and China, he's the only one said anything about it. Yep. Well, and we talked Japan about moment. it on the show. If we ever got the Democrat Party back to normal, like they used to just have bad ideas and not be this corrupt. Right. This corruption thing from the Democrat Party has really started kind of Clinton into Obama. And it's just the party today on the Democrat side take apart the ideology. They are the corruption of the Republican Party in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. The Democrats just don't see it, you know. Well, right now, the Democrat Party is anti-American. Right. It is an enemy of America. Everybody in it that's contributing to what these criminals are doing to us. And, and I just like to see uh, Fetterman's not a good guy. He's an idiot. Right. He was a terrible mayor, one of the worst towns in in Pennsylvania. Uh, just, just horrible. But I said this on the show a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I remember growing up when everybody supported Israel. Yep. Everybody on both sides of the aisle, especially Democrats. 
Right. And that went away, man. They went right to the Nazis. Here was um for back after after Donald Trump uh put out his statement. Here's the hard truth, and nobody seems to want to acknowledge it, but it's what's happening in plain sight. And I'm gonna ask you to open your eyes. They want to narrow this down to a two horse race between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley, a puppet who they can control. Then they want to eliminate Donald Trump this spring or whenever it is and trot their puppet into the White House. It's hiding in plain sight. We're not going to look back a year from now and say, oh, we were shocked that that happened. I think we're going to look back a year from now and say, how could we not see that happening when every clue was hiding in plain sight? They're selling us the rope today that they're going to use to hang us tomorrow. And we have an obligation to this country to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm in this race because we have a duty to this country and the America First movement to make sure this lives on no matter what. It didn't start in 2016. It started in 1776. And the system has made clear they're going to now stop at nothing. And I mean nothing to keep Donald J. Trump out of office. I have pushed back against this at every step. I filed FOIA demands against the Biden administration. What did Biden and Merrick Garland tell Jack Smith in those federal prosecutions? This week, I filed a Supreme Court brief laying out what I view as the best legal argument that the Supreme Court does need to hear in order to overturn Colorado's disastrous ruling. I've pushed back against this at every step. I'm the only candidate who has said I would remove myself from Maine and Colorado's ballots if they eliminate Trump. And I've called on every other Republican to do the same thing because that's how we protect ourselves against this election interference. But at a certain point, we have to open our eyes and see the hard truth. And yes, our duty is to this country. It's all I'm asking is to open your eyes. I got a question, Vivek. You're saying, or on those shirts and whatnot, I mean, and, and agree. I mean, I don't think that you made shirts. I don't, I mean, I, I don't even think shirt idea. I don't even think the shirt idea was your idea. I, but I, I think you posing with them was wrong. But the question I have is this. If you want people to vote for you to save Trump, if you win, are you going to give, are you going to give everything to Trump? Is that what you're saying? Vote for me to save Trump. So when I win, I'll just give it to Trump. It's a deep statement. I, I want to know if Vivek has a badge. Did they give you a badge, Vivek? <laughs> you know, I mean, this is a setup. To me, it's it's a, if, if he gave a shit, he would be working for Trump. I was going to say, Vivek has the right thought. I've said it on the show. I think there's about a 30% chance Trump does not make it to election day. That's kind of the number I'm landing at. I really believe that. I think the deep state's real. I think they'll stop at nothing to stop him. So I agree with Vivek. I disagree with his solution, which is vote for me. Now, if, if Vivek really believes to save, that. Save, to save Trump. For a right. pardon is what he's saying. Yeah, but if Vivek really believed that, he would oh, say, man. I am Trump's backup. Oh. I'm Trump's VP. And they can't get rid of him because I'm going to be 10 times worse. That would be how he would play it. Not vote for me instead of Trump. That's just a dumb. That's, I mean, that, that this is, to me, this shows you the deterioration of the quality of our intelligence community. Right. That's what it shows me. It's so out there in your face. Why would that guy say that? And, and why, and why wouldn't the fight be if they're going to try to take him out, let's take them out. You know, because that's where it's coming down to. You know, that, that's what they're trying to push. And I think we, we got to try to save it at the, at the ballot box. If something happens to the man, we got a whole different game. And I don't know what the rules are. Well, i tell you this. Um, however, however it goes tonight, uh, it's going to, I mean, th things start now. Because mm -hmm, you win the night. It goes on your resume. I won the Iowa caucus. Okay. Um, I'll tell you this. I think the only two people that are going to be in the race for the next, I mean, for New Hampshire and South Carolina is, just, is uh, Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. I concur. DeSantis, you don't have a chance in New Hampshire or, or um, South Carolina. You don't. And honestly, the way things are looking, you might not have a chance in Florida. Um, for the numbers that are coming out of there, Donald Trump is up on you. In Florida. Can you imagine going to Florida? 
for the primary and losing that. What You're about Haley? Haley in South Carolina is coming up. Right, right. Exactly. I mean, but for her, if she <coughs> she has the establishment behind her right now. So she might get to the middle of the primaries or toward the end before before she rolls out like Ted Cruz did. If she can finish number two in many of these, she's she's gonna stay in there. But DeSantis, Santa's in trouble, homie. If he gets in Florida and remember now, can you, oh my god, can you think of it? Everybody's talking about how much he won in against Democrats and stuff in uh his last election, right? Everybody's talking about, but if he loses the primary to Donald Trump in Florida. Which he will. What? Oh my God! No, his political career as a governor might be may I hurt really bad after that. <coughs> you know, we already heard two counties that they tried to um, uh, uh, move away from Disney. They just said, "Screw you, we're going back to Disney." So uh, I don't know if y'all saw that that headline last week, but I was like. A whole lot of things that he went into the election with have been turned around by federal court decisions. You know, now I know they're going to get appeal, but you know, that's that's just how it rolls. All right, guess what? We're getting ready to talk about. I we're getting ready to give you our um, our uh, picks for tonight. There's four presidential candidates, and. Um, <coughs> We'll see how we do tomorrow. So, Jay, give me your four. Uh, well, my four I'll work from the back up. And I kind of put them, I gave them like a 5% window. I think Vivek lands 5 to 10. I think Nikki Haley lands 5 to 10. I'm going to say Ron DeSantis surprises and comes in 25 to 30, which means President Trump falls 40 to 45. I'm going to say, oh. wait, 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 wait. rank them. You mean Trump will win with about 40 to 45 percent. DeSantis okay. second. But I oh. think he comes in higher than we think. I think he's going to be 25 to 30 really? percent. I think that Nikki Haley falls third at five to 10. I think Vivek falls third at five to 10. Wow. OK. Or whatever. Haley and Vivek will be pretty inconsequential is my thought. I'm going to have Trump winning with about 60%. Ooh. And I think uh, second will be Ron DeSantis at about 7%. Haley will come in about 6 And Vivek will be around 4 or 5 You know, I, mean, I don't know if that adds up or not, but approximately in there. I think Vivek's the big loser. Uh, and I think Vivek and DeSantis are the big losers. I do think it's going to be a two-person race between Trump and Haley just because of the resources she has, but I don't think she's very popular. I don't think it's going to work. People don't like her. Okay. Okay. Um, I see Trump winning, uh, I don't know, uh, 54%. I see Vivek, Vivek, No, I see um, Nikki at uh, 17. Ooh. I see DeSantis at 15. And I see Vivek with the, with the rest. Perfect. Yeah. They have Vivek like less than five. Find out tomorrow. I can't less, wait. Tonight's yeah. going to be exciting. And I was going to put Vivek up there. Uh, send me those numbers so I can um, put them, uh, so I can make a graphic for us. But um, uh, I wanted to say, because I still think, again, don't be surprised if Vivek comes in second after some of the things that I've seen. That's why we watch these things. Right. Don't don't be surprised. I, I was going to say, I was opining on that this weekend with the wife. There's mm -hmm. very few things that are kind of exciting that you really have no clue how it's going to go. This mm -hmm. caucus has been it. I mean, if you think about it, like Tim Scott was running. 
You know, he, Chris Christie was running. The Borgum guy was Mike Pence these. was running. Right. Yeah. The, Larry, the Larry, former Larry, vice president couldn't make it to the Iowa caucus. Larry Elder was running. <laughs> Larry <laughs> Elder was running. I mean, how does he not make it to Some the Iowa Some dude named Burkwam or Burkham or something was running. Right. And he endorsed Trump yesterday. He endorsed Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Sure but, but you've got like. 30 below windchill. Laura Loomer was like, is are they, is Harp controlling the weather? I mean, it's horrible in Iowa. She You're only going to have 200,000 to 300,000 people show up. That's why I'm picking an overperformed by DeSantis. I think he locked down the people that are actually running the caucuses in a lot of cases. He went and courted their endorsement. He donated to their campaigns. So the dude running the caucus will be there and bring his friends. So but that's why I think he'll overperform. But, but but Vivek's been to every county twice. Um, yeah, I could be wrong on twice. Vivek, and I hope so. Twice. And I was like, damn, that's 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 um that's that's jet set net state war. Oh yeah. All right. We getting ready to go. Um, I'm gonna make up a graphic and share it with us. Uh, we're gonna um, give you our percentage things, and we'll see how it turns out. Uh, it starts at seven o'clock tonight. Probably watching on now. C-SPAN does a great job of covering these things. Uh, just video. They don't do a whole lot of talking and stuff, but they do have videos at different places. I'm sure you can watch CNN, who really doesn't give a damn about. Republican uh, um, uh, thing. You can watch MSNBC. They don't give a damn about it. And um, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock. So you'll probably see a whole lot about the Iowa caucus up until about 9 o'clock if you're watching Fox News because Sean Hannity is going to come in there and talk that over. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We got Natalie um, uh, coming in tomorrow, uh, and uh, we're going to talk to her. She is joining us on Tuesdays uh, at one o'clock. She's at, at one o'clock. She's gonna be joining us. So, want to appreciate her for volunteering to do that. Jay, that's give a, me some last. Hmm? Oh, I was gonna say that's a big win for you. No, she, I mean she. Yeah, she, awesome. Yeah, big time. I was like, wow. Okay, bet. Because she's knowledgeable, man. She she breaks it down like crazy. Well, I was gonna say like. I saw that clip of her this morning breaking down the RNC CCP thing. And I love that she's so detailed and she gets into these reports. She is. Yeah. And she's like, I found the receipt for this and that. I'm like, oh man, our audience is going to love you. Girl. I think yeah. she's the one that broke down the Hunter laptop story. She did. I, yeah. She yeah. had 30,000 or 3,000, some huge amount of crowdsourced people that read that whole thing. Wow. I mean, she broke it down. That girl's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that girl. Well, and what she did there was cool too, because yeah. usually you ha you get these thirty thousand documents, and the only way to search it is keywords. Right. Mm -hmm. But if they use a keyword you don't search for, you don't see it. So she actually got people to go through passed out chapters. Thing. Yeah, you go first chapter, you go second chapter. Right. Yeah, everybody did the fifty pages, and then it's the same way you're going to have to do with the January six tapes. Right. 40,000 tapes. You got to have a crew, man. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, a final thought for me, too, folks. Going to be an exciting week. I just want to give a shout out why you follow us on social media, why you follow this podcast. This weekend, all kinds of news happened that nobody covered in the mainstream media. There was the Israeli protest at the White House, people scaling the fence. The insurrection. An insurrection, call it that. Fanny Willis turns out she was paying her boyfriend who was married to go after President Trump. Oh, by the way, they also visited the White House. You won't see that on any mainstream news source. You, you, you see these attacks and these wars around the world. Zelensky asking Poland or asking Switzerland to host peace talks. You won't see that. Any, we've been covering this stuff for you guys. We keep you as far ahead of it as you can, but that's why you want to follow us, folks, because there's all the stuff they're not going to tell you about. We'll tell you about it here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. That's for sure. Charlie Kirk, I don't know what's wrong with you, but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's uh, sometimes <laughs> you, you, you young guys, man, your timing is just terrible. Uh, it, that that was nuts, but we'll, maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow. Maybe we, we will. will. We will. Uh, 
I, I just want to see what he's going to say today. And then we'll talk. He should have never, if he, if he would have wanted to talk about today's state of racial relations or whatever, that's an open target, but why he had to do it the way he did. Yeah. You know that, the, and just real quick, that Martin Luther King had a historic effort. Yeah. We screwed it up since then. It wasn't him. We exactly. screwed it up exactly. since then. Exactly. Not him. Yep. My opinion. I'm glad, and and I'll take it from there. Uh, today is Martin Luther King Day. Uh, we all know, right? There's no perfect person in this world. The people that have, that made huge strides to help this country move along and get to a better place, they all had their fallacies. They all had failings here and there. Doesn't stop for what they did. To me, when I think about Martin Luther King, I look at him, I'm like, he helped change the country. He, I mean, for, for what was happening, because TV was just ba a baby back then, but he got the eyes of the nation on what was happening in the South, and that made Congress take action. That made the president at the time, Lyndon B. Johnson, a racist president from Texas, yep. Yep. made him... Do, um, sign legislation. The Republicans back then came, um, 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 put up the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Voting Rights Act of 65, or switching them. They put it on his desk. Now, you know, some people are like, yeah, um, Johnson is responsible. No, he's not. Republicans are responsible. They put it on his desk and dared him not to sign it. He signed it because if he wouldn't have signed it, what happened in 60, no, in 57, 58, America really didn't know that the Republicans pushed through the Civil Rights Act under Eisenhower and Nixon. TVs weren't really big back then, but the Democrats stopped it. Well, no, not stopped it. They didn't support it. Kennedy and they Johnson. busted it. Yeah, Kennedy and Johnson. Both of those that became president and vice president in 60 didn't want that Civil Rights Act under the Republicans in 57 or 58. Yep. It went under Johnson. Johnson, like, God damn, I gotta sign this thing. Hey, all right, here we go. See, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm gonna sign it. See, look, signed it. They gave him responsibility for passing. No, the Republicans did that, you know. But where it went astray was the people that betrayed the movement were people like uh the dude from Chicago, uh Rainbow Coalition, Jesse Jackson. Yes. People like him got all kinds of handoff from Martin Luther King's yeah. legacy and they ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and um, the thing about Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson thought he was like, I don't know if y'all ever heard the story about <coughs> Elijah and Elisha in the Bible. El Elijah was a great prophet, miracle worker, did, did great things. Elisha was his understudy um, the, on the person that, that hung around him. So Elijah was like, you can have one thing after I die. He was like, I want double portion of what you had. But you have to be there when I die. Well, it so happened that Elisha was there when Elijah died. Jesse Jackson, when Martin Luther King was killed, while well, everybody's running and trying to find stuff, he dipped his shirt or dipped something into Martin Luther King's blood and then told everybody, Everything falls on me now, basically. And, and I'm paraphrasing, but I'm telling you what older right. people have told me. You're right. I and remember seeing a picture of Jesse Jackson at the motel. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And tell you the truth, he wasn't close, close to getting that type of blood on him because it was a clean shot that, 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 that got him. But he went around saying he was a leader. And for, and for a little point on, he was the de facto leader of the Democrat Party. Yeah. Of ran, the for, community. ran for president a couple times. Ran, ran for president. You know, they, they they also used him. He used them. They used him. Okay. And uh, he didn't have a chance in hell. But they loved when he got up there and do the speeches because he rhymed and, and did all that stuff and act like it was a sermon. And they, they loved that part. But what I'm saying about Martin Luther King and... 
uh, to, to what Hutch was talking about. Charlie Kirk says some real nasty stuff about Martin Luther King. And he says, now he did it at AmFest, which surprised me because nobody came out of AmFest really talking about it. No, I didn't hear about it. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was like, I you want to deal with this it. issue? That's a valid issue to deal with. Exactly. But right. you don't have to tie this guy. And why would you do that? And then came out on his podcast and like, we're going to go after this and it's going to start on his birthday on Iowa caucus. I'm like, damn, what? you really don't want no black votes then. You, I mean, I mean, if, if that's what you're going to do, don't go around here saying it's a misunderstanding. That, he doesn't understand what happened. He's not old I don't enough. Think, I, I, I don't think so. I don't Just think like so. you said about Kennedy and 1957, a lot of stuff happened between 1957 and the 60s. A lot of terrible stuff happened to blacks in America. Sure it did. It increased. There was a reason why they had to pass that. Things were getting out of control with yep. the fire, fire hoses and the dogs. And yep. you got to stop that. You, you know, know, I think it's kind of a point we make on this show when Americans weigh in on things in foreign countries. There's many times we should just keep our mouth shut because we don't know the backstory. And I think even for Americans, when we look at historical times, what was happening to African Americans in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s was awful. And what? people like Charlie Kirk that have only been alive for the last 20, 30 years. Exactly. Exactly. They don't, they don't have that perspective. See, they never saw, if you look at the real losers since Martin Luther King's death, it's been the people he helped. You look at the status of a black neighborhood in 1957 and you look at the status of the same neighborhood today and you'll see a massive destruction. It's gone backwards. Mm -hmm. It's gone backwards. And I think that's a valid argument, but you don't bring the guy that saved it into it. Right. 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 Because back then, like, like you said, they had the dogs. Think of the courage that man had just the physical you know? courage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I'll let you go after this. I was listening to some of his speeches, well, speech excerpts this morning. And he was talking about the time that he was signing books um, up north. And he said that a woman walked up to him and said, are, are you Dr. Martin Luther King? And he he just, yeah, yes, I am. And he kept on signing the book. Next thing you know, he said he felt a pressure right in his chest. The woman had stabbed him. The woman is stabbed, and when they got him to the hospital, he found out that it was an inch away from an aorta that if she would have punctured it, it would have killed him. I never and, even heard that story. Yeah. Um, if you look for it on social media, it's, uh, I wish I wouldn't have sneezed. I mean, I'm glad I didn't sneeze because uh, he spoke about it in his last speech that night before he died. He, he talked about it. He said that... Um, he got a letter from a from a from a from a white girl, a little white girl, that said that she had heard about what happened to him, and uh, and the things that he was going through, and she said in the letter, "I'm glad you didn't sneeze. I'm glad you didn't sneeze because if he would have sneezed, he would have lost his life." So, I want to see what Charlie Kirk has to say on his podcast. I really don't watch his podcast, but. Uh, he said that he's going after him, and I know Daryl Scott said he's waiting for the son of a bitch to to um, talk. So I know Daryl Scott's going really after. I just want to see what he has to say, and you know we'll go full board tomorrow because I was kind of pissed off at what I saw, and I'm like, okay, all right, I, I'm I'm looking at it going, dude, man, bad decision making. Why now? Skills. Why? Yeah, now? on the and, eve and, of an election. Yeah, and please and please don't do all of this, and then say that you support Donald Trump because what's going to happen is that they are going to put what you said about Martin. Luther damn King, right, man. Slap it on to Donald Trump. Some people just need to shut their damn mouth <laughs> and just quit while yeah. they're ahead. I mean, you know, it's this like, this guy. I mean, yeah, we his got biggest it. his biggest accomplishment. He quit school. He quit college in the first year. His biggest accomplishment, I think he's married to Miss Mississippi or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm just saying, Charlie Kirk, just talk about something else. Yeah. You I have mean, nothing to offer in this no. factor. Thank you very much. You down there in Arizona, you have a million dollar organization. Why did y'all allow um, Arizona to get stolen? 
you down there, you should be able to do something. You know, you got that whole apparatus down there. Work on Arizona. Uh, Go uh, register uh, some voters. Yeah. And, not, and don't talk about Martin Luther King Jr. You don't, no, no, man. I mean, I, okay, whatever. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Love y'all. Uh, my boys, J. Rob and Hutch Bailey Jr. Great week. We got a great week coming. Uh, we're, we're almost to the weekend. So, uh, uh, again, the hour caucus starts at night at 7 o'clock. So, we'll see how everything goes. Well, even take some of your comments tomorrow. If you get to see some of what uh, Charlie Kirk has said and y'all want to ask questions whatnot, do that. Uh, but this podcast should be going on like maybe right now, whatnot. So, we'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>